Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremlin News at 5. I'm Mark Hanrahan. It's good to have you here. I'm Whitney Ward. More than 100 workers at Spokane's International Airport are now on notice they'll be out of a job by spring. That is because of a change in operators for concessions and retail. Kremlin 2 Shannon Mowdy explains the mass layoffs. Shannon? Well, Spokane's airport started looking for and putting out a request for bids for a new food and retail operator back in July. That's also when food and retail workers here at the airport started asking for job protections. And now several months later, many of those workers still feel uncertain as the airport gets closer to finalizing a new concessions contract. A lot is still up in the air for Spokane's airport and more than 100 workers. The board is still reviewing bids for a new concessions operator. There is no way to be certain of anything. But core Dealey Jones knows one thing. It's there in black and white. It is expected that you and the other associates affected by this change will be separated from the company. Dealey Jones is one of 119 food and retail workers now on notice. Once the current concessions contract through HMS host ends March 31st, they'll be permanently laid off. That's over 100 good jobs. It would be really devastating to lose that, and I think really not good for the community either. Union President Anita Sait says they tried and failed to convince the airport to require job retention as part of the bid process. Now they're waiting to see which company takes over. That decision, says airport spokesperson Todd Woodard, is expected in February. But what we are trying to do is get the um, company that's coming in to agree to hire them all. We are trained. We already have our security clearance. We already know the flow out at the airport because that's a very specific kind of hospitality environment. Dealey Jones is 10 years bartending here. Don't even rank him among the longest serving airport hospitality workers. But it did allow him to fight for strong health benefits and provide for his wife's chronic health condition. We're dependent on my income, on insurance through my job. And like I said, it's been a good job. Uh, we, we bought a house here in Spokane uh, a few years ago. We uh, finally felt stable enough to start a family. As a new father, he's unsure a bartending gig anywhere else would be enough. So no matter who takes over. In a lot of situations, we are the first and the last people visitors to Spokane talk to before they either go into the city or go home. He hopes his job, um, benefits, and beloved customers will still be there. And I just really hope that we can all keep doing it. Again, the airport board is expected to select a new operator and finalize that new concessions contract next month. But as it stands now, those 119 workers are expected to be permanently laid off starting April 13th. Shannon Mowdy, Crem 2 News. And in our effort to bring you more to every story, there is a way to track layoff and close closure information in Washington and Idaho. The Federal WARN Act requires companies with 100 or more employees to notify affected workers 60 days before they are laid off and they are kept up to date and filed online. This is the Washington website. You can see the Spokane Airport layoffs right there at the top. The website tracks the company, the locations, number of workers impacted and the type of layoffs, including business closures. All right, let's switch gears and take a first look at the forecast with Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Goo. He promised us a little bit of sunshine right in the next couple of days, right, Jeremy? Just a little. <laughs> I'm a, now I'm afraid to promise anything. Today just wound up being like this dreary day. Never make promises, yeah. Jeremy. I know, right? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> if you want to be let down, listen up. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I am sorry, everybody. We did see a couple of peaks of sunshine. That being said, keep in mind, as I throw sunshine on the seven day, that we're going to take a look at. That really is more of a, you might see a peak of sunshine than a, it's gonna be sunny. So just keep that in mind. 41 degrees right now. Today we topped out in the low 40s. Uh, way colder than we expected. The reason being, we had all that fog in the morning. By the time we got rid of it, we had the clouds. I thought there would be a gap where we could get things warmed up, but unfortunately it just didn't quite exist. Monster storm off the coast throwing waves of energy at us. Kind of falling apart, but we might eke out a couple of stray drops of rain. 
tomorrow we'll likely wake up to clear skies overhead. But we have moisture. That moisture is down on the ground. Uh, temperatures drop overnight. I mean, we're going to wake up to fog and then see clouds build in scattered showers in the afternoon. Maybe a peak of sun if we can get rid of the fog in time, but uh, I'm not guaranteeing it. Friday is a similar story, and Thursday it's just rain, so no sun. Is that a groundhog, by the way? Yeah. All right, Jeremy, thank you very much. Taking a look at our other top stories tonight, a man has been arrested in connection with three separate bank robberies across Spokane. So according to the Spokane County Sheriff's Office, 40-year-old Dustin Perrin is facing three counts of first-degree robbery. Deputies believe he's connected to two bank robberies on the South Hill and one in the Logan neighborhood, which happened just last week at Washington Trust Bank on Indiana Avenue. According to the Sheriff's Office, detectives noticed similarities between the robberies and were able to match Perrin's DNA to a bank note. Perrin is currently booked into the Spokane County Jail. Happening overnight, Spokane City Council members have passed an ordinance which lays out how the city will act on complaints about statues deemed racist or offensive on city property. So take a look. This statue outside of the Spokane Club celebrates Spokane veteran John Monahan, but some community members say it also perpetuates racism. The plaque below the statue refers to Samoan people as savage foes. The Spokane Historical Society says Monahan served as an officer aboard the USS Philadelphia, which destroyed native villages in Samoa as the U.S battled the British to gain control, prompting community members to speak out last night. It is so painful hearing how harmful this statue is to Samoans because it uplifts somebody who killed their ancestors. The statue sends a message that Samoans and Pacific Islanders are unwelcome here in Spokane. Last night, council members passed that ordinance to consider and act upon community members' concerns regarding institutional statements, names, or monuments on property owned by the city. Councilman Michael Cathcart and Jonathan Bingle voted against it. There are two open sides to the Monaghan statue where we could add um, a modern context. So first off, we can address uh, what has been said uh, for over 100 years on that statue. Obviously, calling an entire group of people savages is completely unacceptable. To be clear, council members did not vote to remove the statue. The ordinance passed simply creates a process to consider and act upon community members' concerns regarding city-owned property. And City Council also passed an emergency ordinance that will help turn a section of 29th Avenue on the South Hill into a more pedestrian-friendly street. The ordinance prevents new drive through businesses but doesn't impact the ones that already exist. The area in question is primarily between Martin and Fisk. The vote passed 5-2. to two. Speaking of council, today I had the chance to sit down with the newest council member. Last week, Lily Navarrete was appointed to represent District 2, Position 2, or South Spokane making her the first Hispanic American woman to ever serve on city council. Navarrete fills the seat vacated by Betsy Wilkerson, who was elected as council president. When I sat down with her earlier today, she told me her priorities include making a permanent homeless navigation center, improving the community relationship with police, and working to revitalize East Central Spokane. And at a time when politics at all levels are increasingly divisive, she told me that she wants to be a unifier. Now that I'm here in this position, I will make sure that everyone knows that everyone belongs. So it doesn't matter if, you know, if they agree with me politically or not, at the end of the day, uh, I work for them and I want to represent them the best that I can. Navarrete will serve on council until the term ends in November of 2025. And at that point, she told me she does plan to run for that seat. Coming up on Kremti News at 6, we'll hear more from Navarrete and what she hopes to accomplish.